I should see if the Armstrongs can confirm what Suzanne told me. I won't be long. Take whatever time you need. Pretty good detective after all. The kidnapper places a ladder under the window to Daisy's room. Then he joins the party. Just one guest in the crowd. He somehow knows when Suzanne leaves the room, then sneaks upstairs. He opens Daisy's window, carries her down the ladder, and vanishes. I won't be long. Take whatever time you need. One for the good guys. The number you have called is not in service at this time. Please hang up and dial again, or contact your service provider. The number Suzanne called is not in service? A hospital? The number you called that night is no longer in service. I... I... I don't understand. That's... that's the number the hospital gave me to call my mother's room. You told me you were on the phone with your mother when Daisy was abducted. As we said earlier, I didn't pay attention. And was on the phone longer than I said. But... Since my mother is very ill, she had to leave her hometown, Lyon. Because the treatment is not approved yet in France. She is in an hospital in Boston for a special treatment. I call her every night to check on her. When I came back, Daisy was gone. I'll never forgive myself. Are you sure you called your mother? Yes. Every night since she was admitted in December. Suzanne, I think you really care for Daisy. If you do, then tell me the truth. You can't have been calling your mother while she's in a coma. My mom really is in the hospital in Boston. She really is in a coma. I... I wasn't calling her. I was on the phone with my boyfriend, Noah. Why lie about it? Why are you panicking? Because he's gone. I haven't heard from him since the night of the kidnapping. I'm afraid he's somehow connected to Daisy's disappearance. That he was just using me somehow. But I swear I talked to him. 
Yes, for more like 30 minutes that night. So, he couldn't have kidnapped Daisy at the same time we were talking. But he could have kept you talking so someone else could take Daisy. Yes, you can see why I lied, can't you? I was afraid you'd suspect me of having something to do with it. You can understand that, can't you? Suzanne, I want to believe you, but you've made it harder to find Daisy. Do you realize that? Oh my god, what have I done? What's most important is not what you've done, but what you do now. Go, I'll be back to talk to you. No more lies, Suzanne. For Daisy, no more lies. Noah. The name might lead us to that little girl. I am on this case now, whether my captain wants me to be or not. A card from the florist. It's signed N. A locked diary? Let's see if I can shine some light on its secrets. A locked diary? Let's see if I can shine some light on its secrets. A locked diary? A toy train. Now here I am on a real one. Lyon, in France. What a lovely looking city. Card from the floor. What's in the glass case? Oh, big surprise, glasses. An Eiffel Tower keychain, but no key. Small jewelry box. By the size, I'm guessing earrings. Why put a key in a jewelry box? I expect Suzanne must have gone through a lot of tissues these past weeks.
Hmm, that doesn't work. Hmm, that doesn't work. A toy train. Now here I am on a real one. Not really my style, but I'll take it. A toy castle. When I was a kid, I had a police station and a tiny squad car with a siren that really worked. Can you tell me anything about Suzanne's boyfriend? I know she dated our chauffeur for a while. There was someone else she'd met recently, but... I don't recall his name. Know anything about Miss Moreau's boyfriend? Her boyfriend? I know she went out with someone for a while there. More recently, I saw a man in a 4x4 who would pick her up on her nights off. He never got out of his car, just waited for her. She did seem to spend more time than usual on the phone these past few weeks, but she worked hard. We weren't going to begrudge her what free time she had. Since Daisy... Since the abduction, she keeps pretty much to herself. I won't be long. Take whatever time you need. Any idea what this small key unlocks? No, I... I found it one day on the floor. I, I kept it in case someone lost it. I imagine these flowers must have been beautiful. Who gave them to you? The gardener. They're getting pretty wilted, but I hate to throw them away. Tell me about your boyfriend. Have you been together long? My boyfriend? Why? He doesn't have anything to do with this. Please, Suzanne, the sooner you answer my question, the sooner we'll be done. His name is Noah Garretti. I met him at a Lunar New Year party in Great Barrington. He... he is a kind and caring person. Although, well, I miss him. He had to go away on business. He should be back. These tire tracks could well be from Suzanne's boyfriend's 4x4. That is a great detective job. Sympathy and support for the Armstrong family during this difficult time. Thoughtful, but never enough. Their fairy tale became a nightmare. I won't be long. Take whatever time you need. A toy castle. When I was a kid, I had a police station and a tiny squad car with a siren that really worked.
a toy train. Now here I am on a real one. Hmm, that doesn't work. A card from the... An Eiffel Tower keychain. An Eiffel... I expect Suzanne must have gone... Leon.
I won't be long. Take whatever time you... What a dear child. Sympathy and support for the Armstrong family during this difficult time. Thoughtful, but never enough. toy castle. When I was a kid, I had a police... A toy train. An Eiffel Tower keychain. I expect Suzanne must have...
topographical map. The phone record of the night of the kidnapping. The last call was for 911. Topographical. A topographical map. The investigation is now part of a pile of investigations. The crime was audacious. How could the kidnapper know which was the window of Daisy's room? No, they could use a ladder to reach it, and no, they could enter the room without being seen. The crime was audacious. How could the kidnapper know? The misspellings are clearly on purpose, and they didn't return the child when the ransom was paid. How could the child be taken with so- I can't imagine the pain her parents- That's why I'm here. A damn computer glitch, or somebody pushed the, the phone record of the night of the kidnapping. The last call was for 911. The number you called that night is no longer in service. Uh, uh, Any idea? No, I... Tell me about your boyfriend. My boyfriend? He doesn't have anything. Please, Suzanne. His name... I imagine these flowers must have been... The gardener. They're getting pretty wilted, but I hate to throw them away. Ms. Moreau told me she called her mother. Well, why not? I believe they are very close, and the poor woman is not well. She needs some experimental treatment that isn't available yet in France. Know anything about Ms. Moreau? Her boyfriend? More recently, he never got out of his... She did seem to spend... She worked hard. We weren't going to be since Daisy. I won't be long. Take whatever... Toy Castle.
The world through the eyes of a child seems so sweet. Can you tell me? I know she... I spoke with Suzanne. She was phoning her mother. That's why you didn't see her when you went to check on Daisy. Yes, her mother. I tried to call the poor woman earlier that week, but the hospital said she's been in a medically induced coma for more than two months. Suzanne told me she called her mother, but she would have known her mother was in a coma. Do you know where I can find Miss Moreau? She's in her room. Last door on the left. Okay, Suzanne, let's see what you haven't told me. I can see why Suzanne didn't tell me everything about this, Noah. It's clear when he disappeared that she realized something was very wrong. Tread marks of a four-wheel drive vehicle were found outside the garden on the night of the kidnapping. Noah drives one, doesn't he? Where is he, Suzanne? If you know anything more about him, you have to tell me. I know what you're thinking, but it's impossible. He was very nice to me. He never did anything to make me suspicious. We went out to eat to the movies. Just like a normal couple, he's not the only man in the Berkshires who drives that kind of car. <laughs> Where is a lie detector when you need one? You really didn't notice anything strange about Noah until he vanished? He could get moody at times, as if he had a lot on his mind. Anything odd about the day you went to the movies? No, nothing. People do that on dates. I have to ask, Suzanne. We have to cover everything. In your diary. You say that Noah took you to a cabin in the mountains on Valentine's Day. You read my diary? I'm sorry, but we have to find Daisy. We both want that. So yes, I looked in your diary. I... You're right. He took me to a cabin in the woods. I waited for him in the car. He came out after a few minutes. He was very sweet and apologetic, but he never explained. We went back to the restaurant for dessert. Did you ever go back to the cabin with him? No. Never. So what made Noah drive all the way to a cabin in the middle of nowhere? He left her in the car. Why was he there? This is important. I know it is. I can use Suzanne's directions to the cabin and compare them to the map of the area I have in my car.
I won't be long. Thanks to the information Suzanne gave me, I should be able to find the cabin on this map. doesn't really match. That can't be the right place. not here. That can't be the right place. Probably not here. doesn't really match.
the right place. Probably not here. Doesn't really match. That can't be the right place. Probably not here. That doesn't really match. Probably not here. That doesn't really match. That can't be the right place. That doesn't really match. That can't be the right place. Probably not here. That doesn't really match. Probably not here. That can't be the right place. That doesn't really match. Probably not here. That can't be the right place. Probably not here. That can't be the right place. doesn't really match. That can't be the right place. That doesn't really match. Probably not here. That doesn't really match.
probably not here. That can't be the right place. It doesn't really match. Uh, probably not here. That can't be the right place. Probably not here. That doesn't really match. That can't be the right place. That doesn't really match. That can't be the right place. Probably not here. That can't be the right place. Probably not here. That doesn't really match. That can't be the right place. That doesn't uh, probably not here. That doesn't really match. That can't be the right place. Probably not here. That doesn't really match. Probably that can't be the right place. Probably not here. That can't be the right place. That doesn't that can't be the right place. That doesn't really match. Probably not here. That can't be the right place. Probably not here. That doesn't really match. That can't be the right place. That doesn't really match. Probably not here. That doesn't really matter. That can't be the right place. Probably not here. That doesn't probably not here. That can't be the right place. That doesn't really match. That can't be the right place. Probably not here. That can't be the right place. Probably not here. That doesn't really match. That can't be the right place. I've got it. The cabin has to be here. I have to find that cabin. I hope I'm not too late. Okay, here is this famous cabin. Let's investigate. Noah brought Suzanne to this dump on Valentine's Day? What a romantic.
Hello? Is anyone there? Nobody. I can't just waltz in without a warrant. Hello? Nobody. I can't just waltz in without a warrant. Just waltz in without a warrant. That barrel is sturdy enough. I could climb on it. Daisy's plush toy. If Fluffy is here, the kidnapper has been here. I have to get inside this cabin. Ugh, an old hunting trophy starting to molt. A mall for splitting wood. Perfect for attacking doors. door to investigate. No need for a warrant. Some people seem to have played here before. Some boxes. I wonder what they were used for. Some people seem to have played here before. A 
lot of tools. Hmm, I guess somebody noticed the cabin was about to fall down. This bottle comes from the Blue Lagoon. It's fluffy, no doubt about it. It's fluffy, no, it's fluffy. That's a woman's hairbrush. Did Suzanne actually come in here after all? The stove is cold. Nobody's been here recently. The floor is scratched and worn in this area. Mm, the sofa must have been moved a lot. Damn, it's booby trapped. If I move, it could go off, and that countdown tells me it wants to go off anyway.
since I'm telling this story to you, Mr. Poirot, you should be able to deduce I didn't blow myself up. Let's see if I can remember how I diffused the bomb. Since I'm telling this story to you, Mr. Let's see. Since I'm telling this story to you, Mr. Poirot, you should let's see a
Sind sie? Since I'm telling this, let's... Let's see. Since I'm telling this story to you, let's see. That should do it. Wow, I wonder if that's how close it was. This would have ended my investigation right here. These rods are heading towards the canisters. It must be the trigger for the explosion. I smell a strong, sweet smell. Damn. I think these are filled to the brim with diethyl ether. Incredibly flammable. It looks like the kidnappers wanted to utterly destroy this place and whoever opened this hatch. A wooden crate? I... I have to open it. Oh no. Daisy. No. I called in my discovery of the body. Then there was nothing I could do except protect the site for forensics. The forensics team arrived an hour later, cordoned off the cabin with crime scene tape, and went to work, looking for physical evidence, fingerprints, testing for fluids, DNA, any clues science can uncover.
They removed Daisy's body. The autopsy would take place in the morning. But I had one more stop to make. That night, I swore to find the monster who killed that child. Ratchet uh, on train s saw me? How? Daisy. She was awake? And then she collapsed again. I take the responsibility. She was weaker than I realized. Oh. Lie still while I examine you. Pupils dilated? I'm all right. You are far from all right. You have been heavily sedated. Your pulse is very weak. I... I have to... to finish my story. Ratchet can't escape again. Can't escape. Have no fear of that, mademoiselle. Ratchet will not escape. We must hear her story. This woman needs rest. I will let you know when she is recovered enough to continue. But I warn you, it will be some time. I understand, Doctor. Thank you. I have completed my preliminary examination of the deceased. I think that it will interest you. Indeed it will. And I have other witnesses to interrogate. You are right. Let's not put this poor woman in danger. There will be plenty of time for her to finish her story when she has recovered. By all means. Tell me the results of your examination. That was easy. Can you estimate the time of death? Rigor mortis was advanced but not complete. I estimate the death occurred between midnight and two in the morning. Hmm, that tallies with the witness statements I've collected so far. What is the cause of death? Multiple stab wounds to the upper torso. It's odd there are no signs of a struggle. That might indicate one of the first wounds was enough to kill him. It seems that Monsieur Ratchet had taken sleeping pills during the night. Ah, that would explain the lack of defensive wounds. Mr. McQueen and Mr. Masterman told me that Monsieur Ratchet didn't smoke. Can you confirm this? I can't say without a more extensive post-mortem. What can you tell me about the stab wounds? I counted twelve in all. One or two are so slight as to be practically scratches. On the other hand, at least three would be capable of causing death. The angle of the wounds is instructive. Most appear to have been struck by a right-handed person. But you see, this one, under the right armpit, it's not a deadly blow, given the depth, but a right-hander couldn't have done it. It was most certainly struck with the left hand. So, our murderer is left-handed. No, it is more difficult than that, is it not? As you say, Mr. Poirot, some of these other blows are just as obviously right-handed.
Do we have a first and second murderer, as the great Shakespeare would put it? The first murderer stabs his victim and exits left, turning off the light. Then a second murderer comes in the dark, does not see his or her work has been done, and stabs a dead body. Magnificent. You think so? <laughs> I'm glad. It sounds to me a little like nonsense. Thank you, Doctor. Excellent work under difficult circumstances. Please let me know when I may speak again with Mademoiselle Locke. Of course. Even a smoker might innocently turn me down. Yes, that's certainly a good place to start. Personally, seen some passengers smoking. I just have to remember who they were. I suppose it's likely they will give me the list of who smokes what. My little gray cells did not let me down. How is Mademoiselle Locke, Doctor? Her vital signs are improving, but she is still unconscious. I understand. Thank you for looking after her. I'm right again. That happens to me a lot. Captain Arbuthnot, I beg your pardon, but could you answer a few questions for me? I'm grateful you found my ticket, Poirot, but now is not convenient. I certainly didn't expect such a resistance. I need to be sure before accusing the captain. Hmm. 
Most of the passengers pass by the bar during the day. They eat, drink, write. Maybe I can use this information for my investigation. to be an observant young man and serves the passengers regularly. Fantastic! Yes, if I ask them to write something trivial, they may do it instinctively with their dominant hand. Think, Poirot, that is not a good answer. Given all his regular duties and the number of passengers... Brilliant! Yes, I will remember which people use their right or left hand. That was easy. Mademoiselle Debenham, I have a few questions for you. Of course. Let's start with your movements last night. There's little to tell. I went to bed and slept. Did you know the man who was killed? I saw him for the first time during lunch yesterday. Did you notice anything about him? Well, if I believed in auras, I might say he seemed dark. Would you mind writing your address on this paper for me? Not at all. That's it. Mademoiselle Debenham is right-handed. Do you recall what time Mademoiselle Olsen went to get some aspirin from Madame Hubbard? I remember glancing at the clock. She left our room just after 10.30 p.m. Was she away for a long time? About five minutes. That confirms what Madame Hubbard told me. Do you smoke by any chance? No, I never have. Do you own a scarlet nightgown? No, it isn't mine. Whose then? I don't know. What do you mean? You do not say, I have no such thing. You say, it isn't mine. Meaning that you know who it belongs to, am I correct? Oh, I see. No. I woke up this morning about 5 a.m. with the feeling that the train had been standing still for a long time. I opened the door and I saw someone in a scarlet kimono some way down the corridor. Her back was turned. It was impossible to see who it was. I understand. Thank you for your assistance, mademoiselle. Mademoiselle, I am sorry to disturb you, but I need to ask you a few questions. Are you the investigator? I am. We are lucky you are on the train. What do you want to know? I hear, mademoiselle, that you were the last person to see the murdered man alive. I do not know. It may be so. I opened the door of his compartment by mistake. I was much ashamed. It was a most awkward mistake. You actually saw him? Yeah. He was reading a book. And what did you do after that, mademoiselle? I went in to the American lady, Mrs. Hubbard. I asked her for some aspirin, and she gave it to me. I usually carry extra aspirin for the refugees, but I gave mine to a camp in Turkey. They needed it more than me.
That's the right answer. Did Mrs. Hubbard ask you whether the communicating door between her compartment and that of Monsieur Ratchet was bolted? Yes. And was it? Yes. And after that, what did you do? After that, I went back to my compartment, took the aspirin, and lay down. That was around 10.50 p.m. Is there anyone else in your compartment? Yeah, a young English lady. Very nice, very amiable. After the train left Vinkovsky, did she leave the compartment? No, I am sure she did not. Why are you so sure, if you were asleep? I sleep very lightly. I am used to waking at a sound. I am sure that if she had come down from the berth above, I should have awakened. Did you yourself leave the compartment after that? Not until this morning. Do you have a scarlet silk kimono, mademoiselle? No, indeed. I have a good comfortable dressing gown of Jaeger material. Do you smoke, mademoiselle? No. I can't stand the smell of tobacco. Perhaps you will be so amiable as to write me down your address. With pleasure. Mademoiselle Olsen is indeed right-handed. This was a very interesting conversation, Mademoiselle. I thank you. If you have any other questions, I'll be in my compartment. Good luck, Mr. Poirot. Strange, this story. If Mademoiselle Olsen is such a light sleeper, why didn't she tell me about Mademoiselle Debenham getting out of bed? She even made a point to tell me the opposite. Et voilà. I'll observe her instead. I'll observe... I'll keep an eye on them instead. My little gray cells did not let me down.
Monsieur Fauché. May I disturb you for a moment? Of course. How can I help? Are you a smoker? I'm trying to quit, but yes. I'm now down to just one pack of cigarettes a week. If you are looking for a heavy smoker, you should talk to Hutaru. Can you write your address on this paper, please? You want to pay me a visit? <laughs> Who knows, Monsieur Fauché? He is right-handed, there can be no doubt. It is, of course, about the murder of Monsieur Ratchet. Can you tell me your movements last night? I understand. Yesterday evening, I took a break at Vinkovsky Station with Hotaru. We then went to our quarters in the staff accommodations, a section of the luggage car. Freya was there, reading, and I went to bed right after. Freya is there now, I think, and Hotaru is in the kitchen. They can verify my story. What time was this? 11.30 p.m. or a bit after. The snow is beginning to fall heavily. I see. Thank you. Thank you, Monsieur Fauché. I'll come back to you if I have more questions. I'll keep an eye on them instead. I'll observe 